Item 3, Annual Review of Technical Policy Standards and Procedures. Wait. Co-Chairs Committee, thank you for uh, having us today. Um, we will be reviewing the uh, policies, procedures, uh, and uh, this quarter will be our technical review. As we've uh, stabilized, we establish a procedure of our standard annual review cycle, and uh, this ensures that each of our documents are kept up to date and allows uh, users' input there. Each quarter we have a set of uh, uh, policy standards and procedures that will be presented, and this quarter is our technical one. If no revisions are needed, then the last uh, review date will be updated and the document will be posted to the website. If revisions are needed, then the appropriate drafts will go through the review cycle again and uh, presented for approval at the next meeting. Today we'll be going over uh, Arizona interoperability, er, excuse me, Arizona interagency radio system errors, <coughs> and uh, Arizona errors improvement, and sustainability plan, the land mobile radio minimum equipment standards, and the Arizona interoperable channels plan. Uh, just a little bit of history. In August, we sent out email to all the state the stakeholders, August 7th. August 21st, uh, we were looking for comments back by that date. No comments were received. Then on August 21st through the uh, 30th, we had an internal review of the PSP and had no changes to the core, but had uh, uh, the idea that we wanted to standardize all of this information into a new format that re required minor changes. On September 4th, we presented and requested feedback from this group, uh, this committee, and on uh, today we're here to present and request uh, feedback from, uh, from you and to uh, have you uh, approve these things. Um, November 19th, we will have the PSCC uh, meeting and present to them for possible approval of the land mobile radio minimum equipment standards and the Arizona interoperable channels plan. Today, we're going to have you uh, review the CARES documents as well as make suggestions to the other two documents. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the land mobile radio equipment standard is established to implement radio features and nationally recognized to promote and maintain higher level of interoperable communications among our public uh, safety jurisdictions. Um, the first change that we had proposed was a change of the minimum channel display requirement from seven to eight characters. The original was uh, seven characters, the proposed being eight. Uh, justification here was that uh, a concern was raised that the increasing the character display would limit the ability of agencies to purchase the radios. However, increasing the eight characters is necessary for the two channels that we have listed there, 8KZ TAC 5D and UCall 40D. And Mr. Chair, if I may, um, uh, Jeff Clark with, I believe, Phoenix Fire. Uh, has uh, raised an issue with this one uh, that was uh, probably deserves consideration by the SIC, and so if, uh, with your permission, it, it deals with the seven versus eight oh, character okay. display. That'd be fine. It, 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 we did talk about this at our last meeting. Correct. Yes, we, we had talked about it um, initially. It was seven, and we thought maybe shouldn't we raise it to eight because. Most radios are eight. We looked back at the interop channels plan and realized we have two channels that actually require eight. Um, but there is a concern with what that, the impact that will have, particularly on wildfire crews and the, the next king radios that they use. Jeff here. Come on up, Jeff. It's hard. Wait. No, that's great. Oh, good time to get it out of the way. 
Good morning, uh, Jeff Clark, Queen Creek Fire Department. Um, there's a couple of things I looked at originally on it. Uh, some of the stuff I didn't, in reading through, I didn't realize that it was uh, more in tune with the uh, eight and the UHF. The VHF definitely, uh, those radios are being used by a variety of different agencies around the state and around the nation. Uh, the DPH, the then extinct DPH radios, uh, they are a seven segment radio only. Uh, and yes, they are limited, but it's it's a very large number of uh, organizations uh, through the WUSH grants, the Wildland Urban Interface grants that they are applying for. Those are the radios that they're applying for within those. Uh, without having it distinguished that uh, specifically for 800 or for UHF uh, banded radios, uh, that's going to include the seven, or the excuse me, the VHF radios, which will exclude that whole entire model line from all these agencies with their MUI grants that they're putting in for. Um, and these are a radio that is standardized within the uh, wildland industry nationwide. Uh, it's being bought majority-wise by uh, all the federal government agencies as well as state agencies as the sole radio being used for wildland and urban interface situations. There are new radios that they're coming out with, however, this is still the standard radio, and it is still a seven segment. So I do have worries and concerns about that, about having it clarified or um, something else within that. And if it's VHF can be seven segment, then you're pretty much going to be OK. Then um, Xteam does not make a 800 or a UHF radio that is seven segment. All the other ones are all 12 segments. So they're OK as far as that. It's just the VHF frequency range that there would be an issue with for these fo the following grants. So does the question? Does, no, that makes sense. Does the, does the radio meet all the other parameters? In other words, is it 48 channel? Uh, yes, they're the actually 400 channel, um, 16 per group, uh, all P25 compliant, digital analog. Wait, what's the model again? Uh, Bendix King BPHX 5102X is the full model. You know, there's still probably a lot of the caches out there that have the older model. The, uh, the Forest Service and uh, NIFC just actually purchased a little over $2 million worth uh, for the radio caches nationally, as well as uh, I believe uh, Sedona Fires. Best example, I think they have right in the neighborhood of about 60 of these in cash radios that they have currently in boxes as cash for uh, emergency incidents in and around the Sedona area. Are, are the older models, so are they also seven character? I don't know. All the older models, the EPH, GPH, and DPH are all, older, are, are all seven segments as well. Um, they never changed that with that model and that style of radio. The command, the DPH command radio is a little bit different, a little bit different screen and uh, method for how they put the, the screens in there. Is this the most recent? Is this still available? Is this, 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 this is the most this recent, and it's not planning on, they're not planning on it going away or changing anytime soon. <coughs> Other questions? Um, just one. I, I think our the, the issue was in UHF and 800 needing the eight characters anyways. I think the VHF uh, programming still accommodates seven characters. So, you know, if UHF and 800 were our target, moving this to eight, um, VHF wasn't necessarily a requirement. You know, I don't, I don't know if you know, our last meeting, we didn't specify that that was really where it had to be. And we kind of had some general discussions that was going to cause a problem, but none of us thought of it in its case. So, yeah, I don't think that there is anything in the VHF part of the age. And there are a lot of the things out there. So. Um, thanks, Jeff. No, uh, thanks for bringing that up. Thanks for your time. Mark? Yes. We specifically said that at seven characters for that very reason. Original. Original, yeah. You right. weren't here last meeting. You were retired. See? So we went out and did a radio survey to find out uh, the, the current, then all production models, how the, the, the character count was, instead of seven seconds. Yeah. Uh, one of the options for standards would be, say, minimum seven recommended eight. Or couldn't we just say minimum seven?
seven on VHF and eight for the other. No, but are there other? Isn't, isn't the way we're trying to currently write the standard though as being all inclusive? Because if we started off with individual standards for you and eight hundred, right? And now we're trying to make it a single standard for all bands. Is the way I will recall the art where we do have them on separate lines though. I mean, <coughs> we did bring them all back <coughs> onto the same page and try to make everything as. Yeah, but for instance, channel counts all the same. Yeah. The you know, and the only thing we're really saying, and in that place, yeah, channel capacity, if we change VHF to 37, that would be great. Yeah, that would be the only thing we'd have to change. Now, just like last meeting we missed the Bendix Pings, are there any UHF and 800 radios that that's going to cause a problem with changing it to 8 that we know of? Problem is we don't know. You know we don't. I'm wondering if is this a, a mandatory requirement or is this the best practices like a recommended? Uh, is this what we're looking for in terms of recommendation for people buy equipment? I think if they buy it using grant dollars, correct. It has to meet the Security grant funding has to comply with the uh, LMR minimum equipment standards and has to program in the interop channels plan. If an agency is using their own agency funds um, or you know other sources of revenue besides uh, typically federal grant funding, um, then they they would not necessarily have to. This would be a standard which would be more in lines of the best practice. But from the standpoint of grant funding, uh, they must comply with these standards. So, Scott, what you had said before, uh, seven recommended eight. Or if it was displayed this way, and I, I have have not looked at this, reviewed it, if we just change the VHF requirement to seven per grade, <coughs> that is it. You might recommend that makes the specific exemption for the appendix games with all the parcels. And keep the others as eights, and we're not going to cause any problems. Without going out and doing another physical survey. Now. Almost everybody out there is. Typically greater than than a yeah. Okay. So definitely change that to seven. Okay. Okay. The next proposed change is uh, to add a section on multiband radios to the standard. Um, with a foot <coughs> footnote that uh, multiband radios. Uh, with 700, 800 megahertz frequency may only be 25, uh, P25 capable. Uh, before there was no standard, and Justin, if you go back to that other document, <coughs> what we're doing is adding that lower line there as a multi-band standard there with the note right below. The recognize that there are agencies that may purchase multi-bands with just VHF and UHF <coughs> bands, not including the 700 or 800. And so while we want the standard to be P25 required, um, if a radio does not have 700 or 800 in, in the uh, radio, then that would just need to be P25 capable. Again, so bands. if that footnote wasn't there, would it still need to be P25 capable? Well, the current concern, for example, would be if DPS were to buy a UHF VHF dual band radio, um, their primary operations are on UHF. They interact a lot, particularly in rural areas with agencies on VHF. Uh, there's really no need to force any of those agencies to uh, activating P25 on their system um, simply because they're having a multi-band radio. If they had two VHF and UHF radios, we wouldn't be forcing it. Our, our so is the difference in saying Project 25 in the column is required, you're just singling out that it's just P25 capable, not required to operate? Correct. The standard in the past has been for VHF and UHF <coughs> radios. Those radios have to be upgradable to P25, um, but not necessarily forcing those agencies to purchase the P25 upgrades. Okay, so just like the capable on the top two. Correct. Okay. Sorry. I was just trying to read the footnotes two and three and then see where that tied back in. So, okay. Okay. 
additional changes that we had were spelling grammar and uh, the uh, document uh, reference sections and uh, definition sections in this file. Some su uh, suggestions that were not included was to increase the minimum channels from 48 to 128 um, and expand the VHF frequency range to include the frequencies, uh, the federal frequencies below and above the uh, 150, uh, below the 150 and above the 174. Uh, justification was there was that the increased minimum standard would require agencies to purchase more expensive radios, uh, the additional channel capacity and the uh, additional range. So, any additions? Anybody really see a reason? Oh, you're, you're stating that we should expand that? No. No, okay. no we don't need to add the expense and all the radios out there and, and grant money. Okay. Um, so here's the action item. Uh, changes to land mobile radio. Uh, taking no action or vote of rejection. You know, the uh, land mobile radio minimum standards will stick or result in the current version remaining in effect. Approving the proposed changes will result in a recommendation that Public Safety Communications Advisory Board that uh, these be approved then, and if approved by the PSCC, the new standard will go into effect. So, our suggested motion we need that there, and we have then, of course, the change of the seven to the eight to add to that. The, excuse me, the eight back to the seven. Okay. So, would it be an amended motion? Yeah, it'd be an amended the motion. Seven character minimum from the DHF. It doesn't have to be amended. Motion. We haven't made a motion. Right. 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 That's okay. suggested. Right. Yeah. So we can just make our own motion that includes the change. Okay. <coughs> so I'll make a motion to uh, recommend to the TSAC that we approve the uh, land mobile radio equipment standard with the change noted from 8 to 7 for VHF. I'll second that motion. <coughs> okay. Just as a point of Clarification, not including the expanded spectrum and expanded minimum channels. Correct. Correct. That's all. That's great. Any discussion? Anything from the audience on discussion on that? Yeah. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Good. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. The next PSP uh, that we'll be speaking of is the Arizona Interoperable Channels Plan. Um, the first proposed change here was to incorporate the priority programming guidance as, a, as an appendix. No uh, actions needed there. Since uh, looking at the original one, the priority for programming guide was already an appendix to that, and that was my oversight. When I looked at the PSIC website, it's easy to see the reference documents and, and uh, thinking that they needed to be um, included together. Uh, when, in fact, what happened was in order to find that document quickly, the PSIC website just expanded that out. It is already a part of that document. However, to avoid any confusion, we have now titled it the Arizona Interoperable Channels Plan and Priority Programming Guide so that people can find it very easily as they read that. Proposed change two. Remove outdated footnote from the private already programming guide. This originally read <coughs> that the Public Safety Telecommunications Council uh, spoke about the nomenclature and why the language was originally to explain uh, why a naming standard was necessary. And this, uh, this need now, we believe, is obsolete, so we suggest removing that footnote. Just for historical reference, when this document was created, there was a lot of activity at the national level uh, between NIPSTIC, uh, the creation of the NIFOG, the, uh, the publishing of the National Emergency Communications Plan, and so there was a whole lot of movement um, in terms of creating a standard, and so we wanted to have that in there initially. Since then, the, the standard has actually been established. The proposal that NIPSTIC has put forward has, been, uh, has become now an ANSI uh, approved standard, um, and so really this footnote is just kind of an historical artifact that really
really doesn't need to be in the document anymore. Okay, a lot of conversation years ago. Sure. <laughs> Additionally, the NECP goals one, two, and three are most likely going to, well, will be disappearing, um, and there'll be, I think, up to five or eight new goals that are in a completely different format from those, so that wouldn't make any more sense by the end of this year. Moving on, proposed change three, remove the outdated footnote from the priority programming guide tables. This footnote uh, originally stated, program in mixed mode received where possible. We recommend that we clarify that some uh, by stating footnote was, uh, or excuse me, the suggested wording of uh, radios capable of being programmed in analog, digital, or mixed modes should use mixed mode for receive where possible. Uh, this footnote was inadvertently removed uh, from the approval draft, so you won't find it in there, and we need to restore it to all of the four priority programming guide tables. Okay. We got a little bit delete happy when we deleted the previous footnote and didn't catch that until uh, when, when you're doing this, it's easy to not see something you've already got rid of. So, okay. Proposed change four, add a background section to comply with the new standard. Uh, originally, we had in your approval draft right there and a foot, or excuse me, a background section that came out of the AERS SOP. We were going to rewrite that, and that got into your document without being done. So we have a handout that, uh, that states this. Um, uh, let me surmise that, that it states the fact that in 2009, this group undertook the efforts to create the standard. And, uh, and then it gives the history of, of this standard right here. So this is, uh, this is what the background wording will include. is trying to do all four technical PSPs at once was actually another major undertaking that uh, we had not anticipated. So unfortunately, we did miss uh, rewording the background section for this particular document. Oh, and Justin's letting me off the hook for my inexperience, too. So. Change five, add a subsection for restrictions for the use of AZ TAC 5 and AZ TAC 5D. Um, the language was originally in the AERS SOP, and it's now been moved to this document <coughs> so that we make sure that we keep that restriction in there. And this was language that, uh, because of the way the interop channels plan and the SOP was kind of the history of those two created. We had this language in the AERS SOP, but for some reason had never actually put it in the interop channels plan. Now that we've restricted the AERS SOP to just AERS, this language really does belong to the interop channels plan. I think it's also beneficial to have it right underneath that so you kind of know what the, the criteria is for using it. Hopefully everyone along the southern border and California border there, know those restrictions, but it's always good to have them out there. With that, we had a change in grammar and definitions and format, and so uh, we'll let you discuss that for any of your comments, and then the action item will be as the same as before, is that if it's approved to PSCC, we'll then um, see this on November 19th for their meeting. <clears throat> Only two changes, change number three and change number four, and the new uh, suggested footnote, the background, and the, uh, uh, that'll be the only changes to the approval draft. Any comments from the committee? A couple of questions. Um, eight errors. D, eight areas delta. Um, where is that? Is, is that a viable change?
channel in the year's plan, and where is it located in our plan at this time? The direct version, I know we've had, we've had it in the past. I don't recall it. I don't Eric, know. it has to be repeated to be able to yes. use the I suite. Don't, yeah, I don't think we, we were. To use the suite, yes. I don't know that we were ever specifically allowing direct mode on on the errors yeah. because it is. In order to. Yeah, it, patch it, 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 it would cause a problem with everyone using it. Well, Scott says we weren't. That's where. It's the same as 890. But we didn't include a call 90 direct in this right. particular plan. Was it replaced, or have we always had a call 90? Because I know that was the that was the concern. Was if anybody else is coming into this region, they don't they don't have eight airs. They don't know what that is. But the 156.7.8 um, call 90 was something that would be standardized for anybody coming into the region, or if we were sending anybody out of the region, they would be looking to find a call 90 in their plan. Why I think that was the purpose of making sure we include that in this standardized plan, but I think that left out the that left out any direct a call ninety direct or any eight pairs direct that did not leave any capabilities to include that. I, I think the other was not there. <laughs> The other thing, Mark, I think was, and maybe Scott can correct me, but rather than having folks use eight airs direct, the preference would be why don't you go up to eight TAC 91 direct and not and use that for a direct channel and not not interfere in or you know in, in any way with the the airs frequency. I think that was the recommended practice. So is there a reason? Something else for message. Well, it's, it's uh, for like air air resources, for example. If somebody has a, uh, a conventional 800 radio helicopter, I know in Pima County, um, all we have is 800. I mean, right now we have eight years D, eight call 90 program D programmed into the radio to allow communications with those air resources outside of the air suite. So um, if if indeed ATAC 91 Delta is available, then it's kind of a moot point. It would serve the same function. Right. And so do we have information or does anybody have any information that the air, the helicopters, and the air rescues, if they have that capability? They should. I think all the aircraft that we've dealt with, Mesa, Phoenix, Ranger, um, up in our region, um, we, they all have this priority programming in their radios. We frequently use the 91, 92 directs for air-to-ground, air-to-air ops if we need it. So all, all of our assets in this region and all the DPS assets have access to all of those direct channels. Well, those the ones in our region are being Right. Likewise, down in, in uh, Pima County, but we only have the 800 radios, so this is a good communications capability for us. Okay, that's, that's fine. And then the second question I have is programming. Are people actually programming eight errors one or eight errors two in the radio, or are you programming those as errors one, errors two, errors three? I know in our region we've, we've done that because with multi-band radios coming in, you can have the errors one, you can have eight errors one. If you just put errors one in there, with a multi-band radio, you have different capabilities. So even in our 7800 only radios, we're including the eight airs one as the standard programming. And I think most of our partners in the region are all doing the same. VHF and UHF. The airs. We do the VHF. The airs. The airs. <coughs> okay. and, I, and we added that due to the multi-band technology because you, you theoretically could have all three of those airs capabilities in that radio and would need to know which one you're operating on. The audience input on this one? The, the other reason we dropped the uh, errors, these, because of limited camera space. 
Otherwise, uh, an 8 call 90D or an errors, uh, eight, uh, eight error, errors D would have made sense. Comments. I would entertain a motion to approve this policy standard. I'll make a motion to recommend the PSCC approve the Arizona Interoperable Channel Plan and Priority Programming Guide as presented in the approval draft for the following. You suggest footnotes and the new background. Okay, thanks, Jeremy. Do you have a second? I'll second. Seconds. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions? Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. On to the next one. Number three of four. The standard uh, operating procedure uh, for the air state plan is uh, state, uh, used as a statewide interoperability system known as the uh, AIRS. Uh, it's in, intended to inform monitoring, dispatching, user actions regarding the system. The first proposed change was to remove the NIPOC tables from the AIRS SOPs that are also found in the Arizona Interoperable Channels Plan. And uh, so we propose removing them as they're duplicated. That's the first change. changes in that document. Uh, we did, uh, other than these that we updated it to the new style, added a, added a definition section and updated the assignments and map that were in there. particular map, some of the locations, since this map, I believe, was from 2009 or 2011, there were a few locations that were still listed as pending, so those words have been removed. The monitoring table here were, was updated with all the latest information from BPS. Discussion? I do want to uh, add here that these uh, pro uh, changes will take effect as you are the committee over this AIRS document. So, yes, this one does it in fact. Yes, we'll see. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Discussions? <coughs> okay, motion carries. Moving to, <coughs> to the last one, this is the sustainability improvement and sustainability plan for the air. Um, it's guidance for initial requests for new sites and uh, documents and, uh, and documents ongoing maintenance responsibility as new sites are approved. Uh, the first proposed change was to update the DPS contact information. Originally, we had personal contact information, and we moved that to a generic contact information section. Proposed, <coughs> excuse me, additional changes. We've uh, done spelling and grammar corrections and uh, put it into the 
new style. And so any additional comments or things that this committee might have for it, uh, approving this will uh, result in the new plan going into effect. So Jeremy, are the contact numbers the correct ones on the back? <laughs> the very back of that. Way this written, and why I bring it up is I just had some dialogue with Tucson, with the town of Tucson. The way we list infrastructure equipment, it looks like we have to have a backhaul, or it has to be monitored somewhere. Can it? Is there an ability for somebody to put up a site that's not monitored, or not both? Or, because there are some sites out there that aren't. Jacob Lake. So if somebody's doing their own, can it be a freestanding site? The way this is written. That's more of a. So with the, let me look at the way it's written. I mean, from a technical standpoint, I would defer to DPS on their preference on that. Um, yeah, from technical, I think it could be as long as you don't have the, you know, the coverage areas overlapping too much, and you have issues where you're going to get into each other. Part of the writing, I'm not going to have to look at it. It's just in 2.3 is where I think it brought the question to my mind. Okay, I'm just reading uh, Mark? Yes, one of the examples we did allow, for instance, the slide out there to have a good line. Uh huh. Uh, long, long Mason. Long Mason. There we go. We opted to put it on a different carriage channel in order to keep it out of the <coughs> Comino group and it was did not have back. <coughs> Somewhere like Tucson, that's what you'd want to do anyway, because for the Bill Williams site right there, even though Jacob Lake's not. Right, you know, it, it, it's like, well, I think, uh, Justin said, it's the same for DSW and divide the it's very appropriate. We have all available support to find it to one of the other air stations, how to have interference, you know, and whether or not you have to be a standalone or the building needs to be one that's integrated into the system. And I would uh, note the sentence that I have highlighted there, um, which I think does allow for some, some flexibility on this, um, that the specific requirements will be discussed with the proposing agency based on their selected communication site and availability of access and integration into the DPS microwave network. Um, I, I think along the way the, the key aspect of this plan was we wanted to make sure that conversations were happening between proposing agencies, DPS, and surrounding agencies. And that was really the driving intent here, as well as give people an opportunity to, to expand the air system. Um, it, it, it was not designed to establish a, a bar other than you can't cause damage to the rest of the system, you can't increase the workload um, of DPS type of Comments. I had any other comments from the committee? Would, would this document apply, in Scott's example, for example, would this apply when an agency wanted to modify their airs suite? That that is our view right now. That this establishes a process for how local agencies um, can begin those conversations and have those conversations. Uh, 
again, one of the, the key elements was um, we don't we don't want to be making changes to the air system that haven't been fully vetted with all of the stakeholders that are affected by that change. Um, and key among them, of course, are the maintenance uh, staff at DPSWSB, um, but then obviously all the users in a given region. So uh, our approach so far, for example, um, Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz uh, yeah. uh, has been to work with some folks down in Santa Cruz County who have been uh, who are thinking about a potential change. Um, and right now, though, they're all at that very first step of you have to think about the change and then contact DPS. Um, once they work through their conversations with DPS, and it would go through the public comment periods, the uh, discussions among the RAC, et cetera. Um, but to this stage, it hasn't gone past the idea stage. Any other comments from the committee about the audience? Good on that. All right, you got none. I understand the motion to approve this sample. Which one is the policy of standard? This one is the sustainability. This is a sustainability plan. So technically, we call it PSP. An SOP. It's an SOP. Yeah. So it's part of the PSP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> I'll make a motion to uh, approve the Airs Improvement Sustainability Plan as presented in the draft. Okay. Motion by Jesse, second by Jeremy. Any further comment? Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you, Blake. Thank you. The, the next steps. Uh, the approved version will be put on the website. Uh, the recommendations from this uh, committee will go on to the PSCC on November 19th. And then October 30th, December is uh, our year-end reports and, uh, and uh, reports to the JLTC. We did want to ask if this committee had any new PSP development that they felt at this time needed to be started. And uh, we'll open that to your suggestions. Well, it doesn't feel like it. It actually is October. Yeah. <laughs> a new quarter's begun. Okay. Thank you. I just want to say thank you and appreciate it. All right. Thank you.